Hello, Ram Nation, and welcome to another edition of Inside Golden Rams Football with Coach G. It's homecoming at home week. Hey, we know it looks a little different, feels a little different, smells a little different, but guess what? We want you to know that that money you usually spend on a hotel room, on the barbecue, on the game tickets, that money can make a difference this year. We want you to know that you can be on the virtual 50-yard line presenting a donation to Golden Rams football. This is a unique opportunity like we've never had before. Just because you're at home, that doesn't limit your ability to financially impact our team. Your donations to our football Ramley allow us to invest in current and future Golden Rams. You say, wow, Coach, you're, you're coming out the gate strong on that financial ask. You said, let me breathe for a second. Well, guess what? That dirty blue defense we're going to talk about in this episode, they're not going to let you breathe either. We want you to know that the mighty Golden Rams are about making big plays. And this is your financial opportunity to be a big play maker. Hey, speaking of big plays, we're going to take an in-depth look at a dirty blue defense that has nine starters. Nine coming back from a defense that finished number two in the nation last year. I want you to hear about those guys, where they're from, and the positions they play. In addition, we're going to talk to Vice President of Institutional Advancement, A.L. Fleming. And finally, in the last two segments of the show, we're going to see some top plays from homecoming's past, as well as hear from two of our current student athletes, Joseph and Oliver Davis, how your foundation dollars make a difference for them and their family. I can't tell you how excited I am about this episode. So let's go. Let's jump right in. Without further ado, let's talk about Dirty Blue Defense. Thank you, Coach G. We are really, really fired up about talking about the Dirty Blue Defense today. The first thing we're going to talk about is our Dirty Blue It, what we're about. And what we're about is three and out, sacks, strips, tips, picks. That's what we do. Before we get you guys going too much, we want to introduce you to our coaching staff. First, we have Coach Nick Reves, our co-defensive coordinator and our linebacker coach. Coach Reves has been here at Albany State for four years. Three of those years, he's been our defensive leader, the Dirty Blue defensive leader. He has been coaching college ball for 10 years. He's also spent a little bit of time in the NFL. He played with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mostly because of his great college career, where he went from a walk-on linebacker to earn a scholarship to becoming the captain and the leader of the Tennessee Volunteers defense. Our next coach, Anthony Trivio, our defensive line coach, this is his first year as a Golden Ram. He spent multiple years coaching the D-line in college. Coach Trivio brings a lot of experience from his NFL career. He played D-line at the Miami Dolphins, the Green Bay Packers, and he spent the majority of his NFL career with the defending Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. In college, he spent most of his time in the opponent's backfield, and then also in my snacks because we were college roommates. <laughs> Dino Waits is our co-defensive coordinator and secondary coach. Coach Waits has been at ASU for three years. Last year, he led our defense to become the number two passing defense in the nation. He has been integral in the development of our defensive secondary, which has included all conference and all region players. Coach Waits was an All-American safety at Carson Newman University. He was a projected NFL player, but his career was cut short due to a knee injury his senior year. He went on to coach at his alma mater for 10 years before coming to Albany State. He is married to Maddie Waits, and they have three children named Apollo, Rose, and Titus. Brett Cromey is our assistant secondary coach. Coach Cromey is going on his third year as a student coach at Albany State. Coach Cromey played high school football at Lee County before coming to school at Albany State. He has quickly become one of our top student assistant coaches. We have heavily relied on him for the day-to-day -day operations for the Dirty Blue defense, but also for the whole team. Raekwon Bathia is our assistant defensive line coach. Coach Bathia is beginning his first year as a student coach at Albany State. He just concluded his Golden Ram playing career in the fall of 2019 where he was a preseason all-conference pick. Coach Bathia played high school football at Santa Fe High School in Gainesville, Florida. 
He graduated from Coffeyville Community College, where he was recruited to play offensive line at Albany State. Now, let's get on to some dirty blue, dirty blue plays and show you exactly what we're about. This first play is a bit, means hey, big stops at big times in the game are critical for all great defenses. This is 4th and 11 versus Morehouse in a tight game. We call an all-out blitz and get a huge sack. Great coverage to the play side, and most importantly, we affect the quarterback with pressure from the first penetrator, Malik Barnes. This is an awesome display of great speed from our defensive line on the pass rush. Safon Pierre finishes the quarterback off with the sack. On to the next play, which is versus Fort Valley in the Fountain City Classic. Defensively, we talk to our players about winning on first down and getting in second and long situations so we can get after the quarterback. Our secondary is playing a form of man coverage, which sets up this big hit. Now, Coach G likes to call these crunch bar hits. Number 41, Christian Murray tracks his back and lays the hammer. Next play, we talk about the best defenses are able to stop the run at critical moments. This clip is from the championship game when Miles is trying to run the clock down. One of the foundations of our defense is to make the, the, the ball spill out east and west toward the sideline. James Hawkins does a great job of spilling this out to an unblocked defender. We sent a strong side pressure and got a big hit from our strong safety in the backfield. Talk about critical moments. This is a big goal line stand in the championship game against Miles College. We pride ourselves in knockback and swarming the football. Here we do a great job of making the ball spill east and west and the running backs get knocked back and introduced to that dirty blue defense. Our next play right here, we, we uh, do a great job of teaching our DBs to be combative and be physical on receivers and in their routes. We also want our players to attack big moments in games. And this was a big moment in the game against then ranked nationally 13th West Georgia. Jalen Bush does a good job of playing man coverage and does a great job of being combative and making a key interception in the game. Now, we want to highlight some of those players that will be returning to that dirty blue defense. Kawimba Jones, senior DB from Miami, Florida. He spent all his years playing and starting in the secondary. He has one of the most best knows for the football. He's going to be around the football. James Hawkins, a junior from Atlanta, Georgia. He's made his statement on our dirty blue defense. He's found a starting role as our nickel. He also is a pretty formidable force on the special teams unit. Brandarius Rawlins, a junior DB. He has started in multiple positions in our secondary for the Dirty Blue defense. He has some of the best range in the secondary. In his first game he played as a DB, as a freshman, he got an interception. So we're looking for some big things from this dude. Joseph Davis, one of the Davis brothers, a junior, homegrown right here in Albany, Georgia, made a lot of noise for us on defense. He spent a lot of time in the opponent's backfield, and we're looking for him to do the same in 2021. Sophomore Malik Barnes is another local product and Ram legacy from Mitchell County High School. Malik started as a true freshman at outside linebacker last year and accumulated 26 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, and one sack. We are expecting to expand his role and see more great things from Malik Barnes this year. Senior Elijah Brown is one of our most seasoned veterans who has stepped into a leadership role on the defensive line. Elijah started at defensive end making 21 stops with five tackles for loss and one sack. Elijah has the frame and size to affect the quarterback coming off the edge. Sophomore Anthony Harvey graduated from Lee County High School and immediately stepped into a contributing role this last year. This player has arguably some of the biggest upside on our defensive front. Anthony plays extremely hard with relentless effort for our defensive line. He finished his freshman campaign with 31 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks. Senior John Kelly came to us two years ago as a transfer from Shepherd University by way of Mundy's Mill High School in Jonesboro, Georgia. After a subpar year, he exploded onto the scene last year at defensive tackle. John finished his junior year with 20 total tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, and two sacks. Senior Brendan Manuel transferred to Albany State from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College in January 2019. 
He started at nose guard all 11 games last season at ASU. He has the potential to be one of the most dominant players in the SIAC. He finished last year with 26 tackles and three tackles for loss. Redshirt freshman Jalen Pugh is another young guy that we're really excited about. He hails from Jonesboro High School outside of Atlanta. He redshirted last year, but has shown some flashes this fall working with Coach Toribio. Redshirt junior Antonio Leroy is coming back from missing the 2019 season after tearing his ACL. He is a local product from Monroe High School and the son of former Golden Ram legend Antonio Leroy Sr. Antonio plays middle linebacker and was our leading tackler for the 2018 season. We are looking forward to his leadership this year for the Dirty Blue defense. Junior Christian Murray is looking to make an impact this year at middle linebacker. Christian is one of the most explosive tacklers on our defense. He graduated from Newton High School in Covington, Georgia, and has been our starting long snapper ever since his freshman year. He finished last year with 23 tackles and two tackles for loss. And lastly, redshirt junior Stephon Pierre is one of our most experienced, pl experienced players on the Dirty Blue defense. Starting at Will Linebacker the past two years, Stephon has amassed 91 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, and one interception. He leads the right way on and off the field and continues to be an example for our team and our community. That concludes what we're talking about as a dirty blue defense from the players to the style of play on these plays and again describing our it. Back to you, Coach G. and Coach Waits right there for that detailed description of how you know, we go out and stop people on defense and also talk about our returners that are coming to come back for the Golden Rams. Hey, let's, let's transition here. We've got A.L. Fleming here with us today, and we really want to talk about what we're really here for, uh, and that's yes, raising money. Yes, sir. That's uh, making a difference through the foundation. So, A.L., why don't you just kind of talk to us about the importance of the partnership between the foundation and athletics when it comes to raising money. Absolutely. Coach G, thank you for having me and thank you to your viewers for tuning in today. You know, we're, we're excited with the ASU Foundation, with the great work we're able to do with our athletic program, and particularly with you as our head football coach. You know, it's a dynamic time in the history of the university and being able to raise dollars in support of our young men on the field of competition and in the classroom, that's what we're here for. That's what we want to do. We want to help you get those W's on the board and we want to do everything possible as we engage with our alumni and corporations and friends around the country to really invest in that good defense and that offense. Absolutely. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit more about how, you know, ways to give in this new kind of way we created with this text chain and all that. Absolutely. I'm excited, Coach, and thank you for being one of the first adopters of our new Text to Give initiative. You know, people can text to 41444, uh, Rams football, and you can make your tax-deductible contribution today. But there are other ways to give, too. We have our tried and true donors who always write a check, and they can always send that to 504 College Drive, made out to ASU football in favor of the ASU Foundation. 
and then you can always walk it in. Even in this in this pandemic area, you know, six feet apart, we have uh, put precautions in place at the university to ensure our visitors, our faculty and staff are safe. And so folks can walk right into the Institutional Advancement Office and drop off their contribution in person or even head over to athletics and do that, too. Absolutely. Well, I can't tell you, it, it feels like you're in our staff meetings, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're a valuable part of what we do. Thank and you. And I, I really just kind of want to tug on your heartstrings here for a minute. When you watch a game and you look out on that field and you kind of realize that it's not just state dollars out there. There's foundation dollars out there making a difference on that field and wins, but also in young people's lives. Absolutely. Just kind of tell us about the personal satisfaction, I guess, that you get from seeing that done. You know, you know, Coach, I can tell you also, too, as, a, as not only a, as the head of the foundation, but also as an actual donor myself, I always feel positive about the impact that we're having on the young men and young women across all of our athletic programs, but particularly right here being in Lovett Hall today, as I look out at the Coliseum and the great work that Coach Hamp Smith and Dr. Black and, and uh, the former governor did to make sure we had this to be available to our, our campus community, I'm particularly inspired about what fundraising can do. It can make the difference in anyone's life and being able to come in here on Saturdays and see those games happen and be able to see the band and enjoy, uh, you know, uh, the students as they get crunk, as they get hyped to cheer on the Golden Rams, the victory, it just makes you feel good about all the work that you do. I mean, it's critical and it's important. It, and it's more than just being employed at the university. It's a passion. And you have to be in favor. You have to be in love with ASU to make sure you can do the right things to help our students. Well, I, I can't agree with you more. I, I don't know there are two more, uh, two people that love ASU more than you and I. I know our alums and everything Absolutely. out there, but to have boots on the ground here and to be, you know, doing this new kind of homecoming at home uh, week. I just want to thank you personally for coming. I know you're busy uh, and this thank is a you. great time to talk to our alums, uh, but also kind of build our program. No, I appreciate it, Coach. And, you know, I, I know we're coming to the end of our time, and, and thank you for having me. But, the, you know, we want to put a challenge out there. You know, uh, you mentioned in the first episode of the show that we want our alumni to be able to invest into the program, right? Because a, a donor is one thing, but someone who invests expect a return on their investment. And so having opportunity to spend those dollars that we normally would do during homecoming weekend, on average, we crunched the numbers, it's around about 100 to $150 people spend yeah. just in those four hours leading up to the game and right after the game. So we'd really like to challenge all of our donors, all of our supporters, both alumni and community organizations to make that investment. You know, text to ASU Rams, uh, ASU Rams .edu. you can go to the website and make a contribution there or text Rams football to 41444 and make a tax deductible contribution today. We wanna to challenge them to invest those dollars that they would spend at face-to-face -face homecoming and virtual homecoming because we've got a lot of work to do to make sure we're prepared when it's time to hit the field again. Mr. Fleming, for myself and our staff, we just want to say thank you for coming by and talking about how you can give to Gold Rams football, but thank also you. just the passion that you have for our university. Hey, look, next up here on the uh, Inside the Golden Rams, we're going to go the top five plays from the past three homecomings. So you're going to get to see some of our players make some big plays. We are a university of amazing differences. One of culture and diversity that span our community and link us each to another. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, we are proud to welcome you to the best university and HBCU in the world. Welcome to the unsinkable, indestructible, Albany State University. As we showcase this amazing campus of ours, we celebrate all that makes us who we are. Our students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, our community. We encourage you to ignite your journey. Ignite your mind. Ignite your passion. Albany State University, excellence is the standard. Hey, since starting this new chapter of ASU football, we figured we'd take you down a trip down memory lane and show you the top five plays from homecoming since 2017. Coming in at number five, let's go back to 2017. It's the third quarter. This is a 36-yard touchdown run from McKinley Habersham that, go, that broke the game open in the second half. You can see he gets key blocks right here from now graduates at right tackle Jamie Glenn, number 56, and center Ted Cofield. As Habersham gets into the secondary, he picks up another block from graduate Chris Sparks on his way to the end zone. 
Hey, coming in at number four, it's 2018. We have Clark Atlanta backed up deep in their end of the field. And Coemba Jones, safety from Miami, comes up and knocks the ball loose. And now ASU graduate Terry Compton dives on it for the recovery deep in Clark Atlanta territory. Coming in at number three, it's from the same game. Let's get that nasty gray special teams involved. Brand Darius Rawlings goes straight up the gut. The kid from Wright, Wrightsville blocks the Clark Atlanta punt, and there's Habersham, number four again, recovering it. That was one of three kicks that we blocked that day. If you go back to that 2018 game, you remember, we played that game at Hugh Mills Stadium about 12 days after Hurricane Michael rocked our campus and our city. It was truly an amazing crowd and show of support for our players that day, given to us by Ram Nation. Hey, rolling in at number two, it's last year's game against Lane College, and it's big play Brendan Kimball. He intercepts a pass on a two-point play in the second half. He just needed one more move to take this thing all the way back to the house. Brendan is now also an Albany State graduate and is engaged to be married. And finally, rolling in at number one, you've seen this play many times before. It's a 70-yard touchdown on the first drive of the game against Lane College from 2019. Freshman Rashad Jordan is on the receiving end of this wheel route. Hey, all these are big plays that were made on the field, but it's because of your donation that big plays are being made in the lives of these next two players. Up next, you get to hear the personal story from junior tight end and defensive end Oliver and Joseph Davis. We've been talking about being an assertive football team yeah. this week. We've been talking about how well you've gone out there and practiced. And ain't been one guy, it's been every single guy. From the guys who've been playing 50 plays to the guys who play five. Yeah. Listen, we're going to need you all today. Yeah. And let me tell you something. We can't get where we want to go without being 1-0 and this week. The thing that's going to motivate you all day long is that man beside you. How he hard he's prepared for you. How hard that man beside you is going to play over here for 60 minutes. Uh -huh. But this game right here is about pass, man. Uh -huh. It's about putting your assertiveness on somebody else. Uh -huh. Let's send these guys back to Tennessee knowing yeah. what kind of football team we got. Yeah. All that's going to bust them in the freaking mouth for 60 minutes oh, and not oh. apologize ah. about how bad it gets for them. Oh, oh. And they ain't been hit, but they go get hit. Tell oh, oh. oh. Guys, introduce yourselves to us. Tell us your name, your major, your classification in school, and where you're from. My name is Derek Oliver Davis. I play tight end. I'm from Albany, Georgia. My major is Healthy Human Performance. I'm a redshirt junior on the field and a senior in the classroom. 
My name is Derek Joseph Davis. I play defensive end. I'm from Albany, Georgia as well. I'm a health and performance major. Um, I'm a red shirt junior on the field and a senior in the classroom, and I'm ordered by six minutes. All right, so what we really want to know here is who helps who with the homework yeah. and who is the more competitive between you two? Uh, I would say I help him more homework, uh, taking more initiative than he do, so he ended up asking me how to do stuff anyway. Sometimes, but, like, I mean, I'll help him if he need to help, which I want stronger in the subject. And uh, competitiveness, I mean, I feel like we both competitive, but he just got that extra drive he just more aggressive i mean everything just attacking stuff more than i am so uh competitiveness is probably the same but i would probably give him the more like go-getter mentality aggressiveness or whatever yeah i'm definitely way more competitive everything i do i'm trying to win and i'm trying to come out on top next can you tell us your favorite football memory here at Albany State? If I had to pick a favorite um, memory from Albany State football, it'll probably be the Mud Bowl when we played Benedict this this past year. And um, I remember making the play at the end of the game. So, um, silly. And if I had to pick, I would definitely say the Fountain City Classic last year. Uh, just the fans, the vibe, the atmosphere out there was great. And plus, we had a big win, so it was great. What does it mean to you to be an Albany State Golden Ram? Oh, we pride ourselves on being a family, a Ramley, and being a tight knit group of brothers with uh, having personal relationships with our coaches. So it's very special being a Ram, and it means a lot to me. It's also very tough to be around. Like it ain't for everybody, and so it means a lot to me, especially being from Albany. It just be it's just fun being from home being here at home. What does it mean to you to be on the foundation scholarship? Uh, it actually means a lot. Uh, like knowing that the people didn't have to, but they thought it necessary to give funds and their support to the program. And I'm just blessed to be a recipient of the foundation scholarship to be able to do something uh, that I love and go to school for free. And for me, like I said, we're native from Albany, we're native from the area. Um, so just to receive money from the community that we grew up in is a big blessing. Guys, what led you to attend Albany State University? Um, we actually chose to attend Albany State University after transfer from Georgia Southern, simply because it was closer to home and it was just a time for change. And also, I mean, it was it's so much better now, now that I think about it, performing and playing in front of people that you know. When you look in the stands and after the games at the tailgates, and you know the people, you have a personal connection with them. You just add a little spark to being a Golden Ram in Albany, Georgia. All right, tough one here now. No wrong answer. <laughs> if you had to choose one coach on the staff that was your favorite coach, tell us who that is. I would say my favorite coach is Coach Kelly. Um, I have a good personal connection with him. We talk a, a good amount of times a day. Uh, during the week and everything, and he's just really been like a role model mentor uh, guy that I can talk to about anything. Um, if I had to pick a favorite coach, um, it would be the first guy I met. There's Coach Revesse, and um, when we first got ready to transfer over, talked to him a lot. He's a good Christian dude and stayed up and pushed us to be the best we can be. All right, tell us what NFL player you model your game after. Someone currently in the lead that I take tips and hints from and kind of model my game around is Jumbo Smith. He's a tight end for the Tennessee Titans. And uh, the reason why is because he's about my size. Um, he's, he's fast. They use him out the backfield like I, I do at Albany State. Um, he's a competitive guy. He go up and make big plays and big time moments. And so, yeah. If I had to pick someone, I mean, I don't really model my game after anybody, but I watch a lot of Zadarius Smith, Vaughn Miller, and they sack machines. And that's what I strive to be every time I step on the field. So just watching those guys, taking hints from them, and Aaron Dono as well, I try to, you know, throw in a little something that they do and ho help. hopefully it give me success. Guys, hey, look, thanks for your time. You look great in those uh, 
royal blue jerseys right there. And uh, we'll see you uh, back on campus. Hey, what a great message from Joseph and Oliver Davis. Two young men that represent what the complete student athlete looks like, as well as how your foundation dollars and investment impacts the lives of our student athletes. Hey, in closing, I want to thank all Golden Ram alumni for their past, present, and future support. We appreciate all that you do. And we know this has been a different homecoming experience, but nonetheless, we are ASU strong and we are in this together. Be sure to catch our last show of the season. It's going to be Fountain City Classic Week, and we're so excited to talk about what that game means. Hey, continue to do what you do. Be a great Golden Ram, and most importantly, beat Fort Valley.